24th day of September 2018, allegedly, according to that thing we call a calendar, and this indeed is the Ocelli Effect, broadcast live from the facilities of Ocelli.com, but also heard on a variety of other networks. Anyways, do appreciate you for tuning in, whether you're catching this live on the stream, which is usually the best place to, at Ocelli.com or the Ocelli.com radio network on your various apps and such. Uh, it is great to have you along, but if not, you're catching this as a podcast further on down the stream and uh, through your podcatcher to your your final slab of choice, your applicable application. We do appreciate you as well. So it is a Monday or a moon day, depending on how you want to read that calendar. And this is where we're going to continue with Jordan Maxwell. Now, we've done eight parts so far in the series on religion. I, I am really looking forward to this. And uh, Jordan is with me. Last Last week there was a little confusion, which uh, apparently was my fault. I did not realize that Jordan would be ready to go, and I wound up putting together a whole other show. <laughs> you know, in the in the time leading up to the the time slot, because I wasn't sure if Jordan would be ready to go. I, I I thought he actually might be a little tired from some other things he was doing, and it turns out he was ready to go. And so, therefore, the reason why we're not on part ten this week is my fault. <laughs> so, just so you know, uh, Jordan was more ready than I was last week. Okay. Um, anyway. This has been a fascinating discussion. We've certainly gotten some interesting feedback, and in the second hour, uh, I'm going to try and get to some of it. But, you know, it is extremely appropriate to, first of all, find out how Jordan Maxwell is. Now, if you want to follow up, let me, before I even talk to Jordan, if you want to follow up on this, you need to go to jordanmaxwellshow.com. jordanmaxwellshow.com. Now, why is that? Because that is the only website that is actually Jordan Maxwell's. <laughs> okay. A lot of people try and use his name. A lot of people try and make money from his name. A lot of people are offering things, this, that. The third thing. But JordanMaxwellShow.com is the only website that is actually Jordan Maxwell's, first of all. Second of all, uh, when you go there, there is the Research Society website, which you can get to through a very simple button that's kind of obvious there. Now, there's recent developments in the Research Society, and uh, you can go there, and, and if you join, there's a one-time fee. You can get a lifetime membership over there and really go in-depth not only on the topic of religion and spirituality, which we have covered, but... You can go much deeper into a great many other subjects like money, like government, like the uh, the various pieces of redacted history and so on and so forth. A great deal of study and effort has gone into creating the Jordan Maxwell Research Society, which you can get to through the jordanmaxwellshow.com website. Now, there's that, but there's also a new feature over there, uh, Jordan, right? Yes, there is. <clears throat> There's a brand new feature that I've wanted for 25 years has finally happened for me because I have somebody who was able to do it for me and, and they did a beautiful job with it. And that is I'm now able for the first time to stream my videos so that people can uh, click on the video cover and it goes directly to streaming so that you can watch the videos right then and there. You don't have to order them and wait for it to come in the mail. Uh, for, for a small fee, you can just uh, download the, the video and watch it right now immediately. And so that's part of the technology we have that I don't know anything about, but I did have someone who did this for me so that now I can put out my new videos and people can download them and watch them immediately. So that's a brand new thing. And that's on my home page. If you go to Jordan Maxwell show and on the right hand side of the home page, you will see the two new videos, click on them and watch them. That's it. And thank you. Well, right. Now, here's the interesting thing. Just so you guys know, the price of uh, these streaming videos is actually lower than what it would cost you generally to order a DVD and have it delivered. Um, it's it's like around the price of the shipping, you know, for most of the world is it, what it would cost you. <laughs> so it's interesting that, you know, you basically pay the shipping cost and you've got it immediately. 
Yep. Uh, so there you go, electronic delivery. And uh, meanwhile, the Research Society site is still there, just like it was with this addendum. The Jordan Maxwell Show site is still there. Um, actually, I shouldn't say just like it was, because quite honestly, there's more information being added to it all the time. And uh, there are terabytes of waiting information that mm-hmm. are being, you know, added as quickly as the webmaster can. So, therefore, you know, y- you might have gone there last month and said, well, I've seen it all. Don't know how you did that, but let's just say you did. Um, <clears throat> you go there again and again, and you'll find that all kinds of new stuff is being uploaded, not just the new videos, which you can purchase directly, but uh, the stuff that's already up there. And, and plus, you know, it's just great to visit Jordan's website, email him, make a donation, whatever, uh, you know, participate in all of this. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge there that Jordan has given away for many, many years. So <clears throat> you can begin to navigate it by going to jordanmaxwellshow.com. Okay, now we have done an extensive little mention of that, and I promise you I will mention it again before the show's over. But, Jordan, let's get to the meat of the discussion right away. Um, we were certainly in, in the depths of, of discussing the Old Testament uh, and, and all of these things. And, and we've gone to some interesting places. I refer you back to the earlier uh, episodes. But I'll tell you, what you decided you wanted to begin with tonight is uh, is amazing that, well, first of all, that nobody's ever really, I, 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 I don't know, maybe somebody has. Maybe I missed it. But I've never heard anybody put together what you're about to lay down that, uh, that, you know, will, will explain something in a succinct manner about where certain things come from, uh, other than yourself. So who knows? Maybe there are other teachers who've done it. I'm just not aware of them. Uh, but, you know, could, could you begin to explain <laughs> where it is we're going to go tonight, please? Okay. Um, I, I've been looking, for, well, first of all, let me say that I'm not the world's foremost expert on anything. <clears throat> I'm not an authority or expert on anything. I'm just an ordinary man pursuing extraordinary knowledge. I'm fascinated with wisdom and knowledge and where things come from. And I have a character flaw, and that is that I I want to question everything I am seeing and hearing because I'm well aware now that I would say a good 95% of the world that I live in is now being proven to be false and deceptive and lies and corruption and virtually everywhere a human being on the earth turns there's lies and deception and people trying to take advantage of you and, and selling you something so I've always been interested in the world of the occult. And the word occult simply means to hide something. So if you put your hand in your pocket, it becomes definition in a dictionary as your hand is now occult because the word simply means hidden. And so anything which is hidden from sight is an occult. Uh, thing And so this is why I have come to see, after some 59 years, I started back in 1959 as a kid, 19 years old, but I was already well aware that there was another world existing with our world. I was already, uh, I've already had too many experiences at 19 years old to not know that there was other world entities here on the earth that were extraterrestrial or other entities here on the earth which were smarter than we are, which you cannot see, which different religions call ghosts and demons and spirits and and poltergeists and God knows what else. There are all kinds of names for what I'm talking about. But I knew that there was another world existing with the one I'm in and I had a very high respect for it. And I wanted to learn about it, not from it, but I wanted to learn about it. And Jordan, so I began Jordan, reading. Jordan, can, can, can I interrupt you with a question yeah, here? sure. I have a big question that, that I want to know from you personally because i, I got to tell you that, uh, that this is something I've gone over in my mind. You know, the why of why you, you decide to explore these things. Um 
it, it, it's not simply because it's interesting, it's fascinating, and it's hidden, and it's, you know, therefore some sort of rarefied knowledge uh, to really begin to decode these things. It's not just that. I mean, y- you may take some joy in discovering uh, the, the realities behind many of the things which are pushed forward in people's faces, but isn't it because the motivating factor for so many things on the planet is based on this stuff yeah. that we have a need to understand it. Like, in other words, there are whole wars, there are whole societies, there are whole uh, uh, executions of individuals en masse, genocides are committed. I mean, and, and these things happen on the planet, but a lot of times their core motivation has to do with this thing, which is religion in one form or another, that people don't necessarily understand not even the best devotees of the alleged religion even understand what it is that is motivating all of these terrible things all of these and and it's not always terrible things but even the good things that are being done or the seemingly good things or the mixed bags of things in other words a whole lot happens because of this set of ethics and ethos and stories and lessons and so on and so forth. And and wouldn't it make sense if more people actually sought to decode this to understand what makes the world go round, so to speak, right? That is precisely my feeling. That's what I grew up feeling as a kid. Why don't people actually uh, examine what it is they believe and where it came from? But as a child, and see, the, that's why the Jesuits in the Catholic Church have a famous saying that they have said that uh, give me a child till he is seven years old and he will be mine forever. Meaning that from the time you were born to the, about the seven, until you're seven years old, You have just, because you're a child and you don't understand, you rely on the adults to feed you. You rely on the adults to to tell you and to show you. And you're just a little child growing up. And so you're learning. You make mistakes and you misunderstand. But there's also a beautiful innocence about a child that begins to question why things are the way they are, and you talk to the adults, and they will tell you and explain it to you. Uh, But the problem is that the the adults do not have the education, the background, the experience, uh, or anything else that's required, including uh, uh, to be uh, intelligent, to give you, as a child, the correct answer. And so you grow up understanding the world from what your great uncle used to say or what your mother told you, what your grandfather said about it and what your friends at school thought. And so you grow up with all of these opinions. Everybody's got an opinion. And then you listen to all the experts. And one thing all the experts have in common is they all have a different opinion. And then one day you finally wake up and find out, no, we're all just humans. And as humans, we don't know what we're doing. We haven't got the faintest idea what anything means. And even when we go to college and university, they're just telling you what somebody wrote in a book for you to get a work permit, for you to go to college, spend tens of thousands of dollars, go to university, to learn uh, something to get a degree. And you better look at that word, a degree. And so why do you get the degree? So that you can get a good job, so that you can make money and live well. It's not because you you, you are extraordinarily brilliant mind. No, you need a job. So you go and get a degree so that it's a work permit. And ultimately, one day when you're old like me and you're 78 years old, broke, living in one room with nothing, it finally begins to dawn on you that the world of that you have come into, that you were born into, is made up of human ideas, human con- concepts and belief systems that have been around for thousands of years 
And the more we change, the more we stay the same. We're still buying into the same old stories that our ancestors did. And uh, and the bottom line, at the end of the day, if you're intellectually, and catch that, intellectually honest, which most people aren't, but if you're intellectually honest, you will understand that whatever it is that you believe, whatever it is that is important to you in your life, it's the ben- it, it is basically depends on where you were born, mm. where you happen to have been born. If you happen to have been born in Russia, then you will probably be looking at things from a Russian Orthodox viewpoint of the way your family uh, you know, taught you. Or if you were born in Alaska, then you would... Uh, you know, you would take on the culture of the people in that area, the Eskimos and their theology and beliefs. Or if you were born in China, then you would have a Chinese viewpoint on things. And if you were born in England, then you might be a Christian or an atheist or whatever. But your belief system is based on where you happen to have been born. And since you didn't have any choice about it, you came into the world wherever it is you came in, and you had all of those people around you explaining to you the way life really is. And if you don't, if you don't go anywhere, if you don't travel and see the world, the rest of the world doesn't believe what you thought you believed. And so, I've always understood that that uh, the world is based on what you think and what you believe, based on where you were born. Mm. Now, it, it's interesting. Take, it's interesting that we have the Western world, they call it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, often, you see, m- most of this audience is going to be people that primarily speak what they call the English language. Mm-hmm. This automatically means they're kind of already in one particular part of the world. That's you know right. what I mean? Uh, of course, That's English right. has become the language of business, and uh, it, it is, as you have described <laughs> it, a designer language and all always okay but it's interesting to me that when they start talking about the western world and this idea that we have and i hate to use the word again but an ethos an ethical system which Mm -hmm. is based on something and i often ask well what is it exactly most people will respond that it is based on the judeo-christian ethic Mm -hmm. and i find that interesting because to nail down the Judeo-Christian ethic, uh, people will often turn to, well, here's the Ten Commandments. And we talked about the Ten Commandments on this show. But they will tell you that there's a lot of stuff built into that based on the stories in the Old and New Testament. And this is it. There is an ethical system here which has been given to us by the one true God that has been given to us by the one true system, which became another system as time went on. But both are still valid, you see. The uh, the original uh, Jewish or Judaic system, right, is still in effect, but it has been modified into this uh, into the new religion of Christianity. And really, it's it's almost as if to say there's a Christian world and then there's everything else. Yeah. Um. But I don't see clarity in the actual scriptures, um, quite honestly. And I don't see clarity coming from these various sects and individuals that claim to have the best translation and understanding of all of those things. So where does this come from, really, Jordan, is the question, right? (laughs) Well, yes, and I, I would remind you that there's a scripture in the uh, in the Islamic. Uh, what's the name of the book? Uh, the Quran. Uh, Quran. Quran. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the last two letters is in Quran is A N, and that goes back to the god Anu, A N, A N N U, Anu, and so that's an interesting connection to the ancient Greek gods that the Islamic world is not aware of and we don't want to you know disturb them by telling them something they didn't know but um, the Quran is actually based on the ancient Greek gods but uh, there's a scripture in the Quran uh, that says and I can't remember exactly where it is but it says 
uh, God's talking to uh, the the Islamic people of the de- of that day, and the scriptures in the Quran says God said, quote, "We have come down from above and brought you your scriptures." End quote. What are you talking about? We have come down. Uh, from above and brought you your scriptures. I'll have to find that again. I've got it written down uh, on, on my research papers. I was going to, but I haven't got it in front of me. <clears throat> but there is a very pregnant statement in the Quran. We have come down from above and brought you your scriptures. It's not as if uh, uh, Muhammad. And all of the holy ones of uh, of, of, uh, of Islam uh, actually lived, and they wrote as they were living out these different belief systems. They were writing it down, and no, the scripture says in the Quran, "We God said we." What are you talking about? God says we. Who's we? And so it says in the Quran, God said, "We have come down and brought you your scriptures." Well, you better do some homework and find out who the we is and where they come down from. And what are you talking about? They brought you your scriptures. In other words, it's already been written down and it's already been codified and we're just giving it to you people. You go sit down and read it. And don't ask where the the book came from. Don't ask who wrote it. Because there's all kinds of ideas, and we all got different ideas about who wrote what and when they wrote it and the time and all that. No, just read that one scripture where God says, we came down and gave you your scriptures. I'm assuming that is a very good scripture for everyone. Catholics, Protestants, Jews, Arabs, the whole world has their holy scriptures because we came down and gave it to you. Mm. So that is, as far as I'm concerned, an incredible but brilliant statement that is absolutely true in my book because you will find all the different scriptures in the world are very complete. Every All the scriptures are complete. It's all there. Whatever it is you need to know, it's all there. And and it all it coincides with other scriptures, and everybody knows that they have the truth. And all the different religions, they have the truth. And obviously, you know, whatever particular religion you happen to be uh, belong to is obviously the correct one. Obviously. Why? Because if you thought for a moment that the people down the street from you and their church and their particular religion had the truth then you would already be there with them if they had the truth but obviously they don't have the truth they just have a some book or some writing by somebody but you have the actual truth why because that's the church you go to and you're not a fool and therefore you would not be going to that church if there was even a hint that it might not be true. So therefore, you are going to a particular religious belief because you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that this is the absolute correct way to understand theology of God and religion. And so everybody else on the block feels the same way about their beliefs. And so the bottom line is, if you look over the earth with an open mind, you will finally see the entire world is lying in the power of the wicked one. The conceptual idea is that the entire human race is so full of bull and so lied to and so corrupt and so ignorant as to understand where their belief systems have come from and they will fight you to defend their particular beliefs. And therefore, like you said, these belief systems, somebody's given us all these scriptures. Somebody's giving us all of these religio-political ideas and philosophies that we grow up, up to seven years old, we grow up hearing and believing, and now 
we now have our own religion, and that's the difference, and I've said this before, but I say it again, that's the difference between theology and mythology. Theology is the worship or, or the study of God. T-H-E-O is God in Greek. Therefore, if you want to study the subject of God, it would be called theology. <clears throat> but then there is another kind of study that's called myth. Ology. Mythology is based on the word myth, which means a story, basically. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's true or not true or good or evil. It doesn't mean anything. The word simply means a story. Well, there's all kinds of stories. It may be true. It may not be. It's just a story. So now, how do you know the difference between a mythology, it's just a story, and theology, the correct understanding of God. <clears throat> How do you tell the difference? Simple. The way that you understand God, the way you and your family and the way you and your church or your, your group understand God is called theology, the way you understand God. But the way somebody else across town, the way the other people in another city, the way they go to a different church or a different uh, religious service, uh, they have a different view of God, completely different from you. So obviously what they have is mythology because you would not bother yourself with a simple story, a myth, a mythology. You have the truth, therefore you are studying theology. But your neighbors in the, in town that are going to different religious beliefs and have different religious garb and all that, uh, they are actually worshiping a myth because they don't have the truth. You got the truth. And if you thought that they had the truth, then you would go down and join them and go to their mosque or they would come to your synagogue. And so people don't realize whatever it is you think you believe is because that's what you believe. Thank God it's not what everybody else believes. And so everybody who accepts things, you know, like, like their fellow man, everybody wants to be accepted. And this is another problem the human being has, is that as a child, especially, you know, you can realize, relate to this. As a child, when you're in school, Though you don't want to have to be called upon by the teacher to answer a problem she's put on the blackboard and she calls you and you didn't do your homework or you don't understand it. As a child, you don't understand what's being said. And so she calls upon you to explain to the class what she's written on the blackboard and you explain how you get this, uh, this answer and you don't know. What children do not like and, and adults don't like, but especially humans don't like being laughed at and mocked in front of an audience by their fellow man because they don't know something. That's why most people are not willing to open their mouth and say anything in public. They, they have an a inferiority complex. They don't want to be mocked and laughed at because they sound... Uh, they sound ignorant or they make silly statements that are, are not true and then people laugh at them. So we humans don't like to be mocked and laughed at because we don't know uh, what we're talking about and we don't like being chastised in front of an audience. Well, adults are the same way. They don't like having to stand on their own by themselves against their fellow man and say, you're wrong. What you believe is not true, you're wrong, and here's why, and you stand up, and then you get fired from your job. You lose your employment. Right. And then the next thing you lose is, is your wife and your family, and then you lose your friends. And later on, when you're 90 years old, you just lose your mind. Why? Because you stood up against the, the powers that be. You stood up against the system. And so most people are, don't have the courage to be intellectually honest and stand by themselves against the whole world because the truth, if represented by one person, is still the truth. 
and and so we see that this is what's going on in the world today. All the different religions and all the different philosophies and political parties, and there's nothing but chaos. And that's why the Freemasonic Order has that famous in signature uh, Ordo Abkeo. Ordo Abkeo is a Masonic term which means order out of the chaos. And so the idea being is to create chaos, create all kinds of belief systems, ideas, write all kinds of books. Some books are Islamic books. They, they are uh, God's honest truth for the Islamic world until you look at it and read it, and then you find out, no, it's not the God's honest truth. It's just some book somebody wrote. And you got millions and millions of people who will follow it. Why? Because that's the way children are. Children in a schoolyard, whatever the teacher suggests, and one child does it, all the other children want to do it. Before you know it, we're all Democrats. And then later on, we're just like a flock of birds. All of a sudden, instantly, they fly in a different direction. Now we're all Republicans. And then we're, no, now we're all doing this or we're all doing that. We're all going to the football game together and we're all going to cheer the right team. So all I'm saying is that if you're an individual who thinks and who questions and who actually has something called intellectual honesty, meaning look at what a thing is and, and admit it in public then you will begin to see that all the different religious ideas and concepts have been given to you, like that scripture in the Quran says, we gave it to you. All of your scriptures, we wrote it, and we gave it to you. And we're smart enough to know how to manipulate you, because we're not from this world. We're from another world. We're far smarter than you are. And you know us as demons and devils and spirits and ghosts and poltergeists and jinns whatever it is you want to call us we're not from your world we're me, from a, something called another world that's called the preternatural the word is not supernatural but preternatural meaning not of your world let me add something in there though because what are often described as angels too play a role yeah. in this uh, uh, somebody asked the question about uh, when you were talking about how the uh, the scripture was given to the people who become Islam. Um, well, according to canon, right, Muhammad is visited by an angel who gives him the first part of the Quran. Uh, according to well, some people, that would be uh, uh, Gabriel uh, would be the angel that visited Muhammad. Oh, okay. Right? You, were you there? Well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm listening. No, I know that, but I'm making my point. <laughs> I, I got there? it. <laughs> I, I get it. I'm saying that though. But, but either way, if somebody takes away the word angel for a second, yeah. and just imagines, look, in point of fact, you don't say that angels are. You know, I mean, I, we hear the term angels are among us, but angels are not from this world, really. Right? No. So you have an angel coming and delivering something which is supposed to be. The word of God, right? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and and there are various messages. The, the Metatron does this as well as you know uh, those that have heard the word of God. We talked about Moses receiving it. We talked about others, Abraham receiving it, uh, so on and so forth. But these entities of one type or another, no matter how they're described, yeah, they're from somewhere else. <laughs> OK, they're not us and they're not, you know, according to the story. I'm not saying that this is the way it really happened. I'm saying that according to the stories that have been told and you can find a version of this. It's not just in the Quran, by the way. Uh, you know, you can find parallels for this in the Torah. You can find parallels for this in the in, in the what they call the New Testament very easily mm -hmm. where angels or some other entity come and deliver this information. So I was just showing a cross section really quickly. And uh, uh, the, the, the question came in, was he talking about the angel that first visited Muhammad, um, which is described as Muhammad's first revelation uh, in, in English, I guess, in the Quran. Um, and I, I'm not sure if that's what you were describing, but it sounds exactly like what you were saying, and it fit perfectly with what you were saying. So yeah. just wanted to put yeah. that in there. Go ahead. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, that's what I was talking about, that, uh, the angel came, uh, the angel Gabriel, the angel Michael, the archangel, they came and they, they gave a message to this great prophet. 
and he wrote it down and, and he became famous. But what we don't realize is that this is a human uh, tragedy because uh, somebody comes up with, uh, years ago, somebody came up with an idea of a hula hoop. And pro- incredibly, overnight, all over the world, everybody was into hula hoops. Everybody. All the nations of the world. Russians had hula hoops. Chinese had hula hoops. Everybody had and you've got to wonder, what is going on here? And again, I will bring up the same example as before. When you see thousands of birds flying as in one direction as one unit, and instantly, in a blink of an eye, they all turn and go in a different direction, just as uh, you will see fish, uh, schools of fish, and you will see thousands of fish, and they're all going in one direction and instantly they all turn and go in a different direction. How is that possible that they all make the same decision instantaneously when there are thousands of them? The same thing is true with us. We all are are just like all the other animals on the earth. We love to go to the football game. Why? Because everybody else is going. And then everybody's voting for this a Republican, so we're voting for him. Everybody's going to see this particular movie because everybody loves this particular song. And therefore, we love that particular song. Why? Because all of our friends and neighbors. And so you find out, no, we are like the animals. All of us are just going from one place to another and and somebody is leading us. Somebody's giving us these new ideas, the new religions, the new concepts, what we call the new technology. And we're being led by someone that we cannot see. We're being led by some kind of a presence on the earth that is leading the destiny of the human race. And we are nothing more than ignorant, ill-informed, self-centered, egotistical, unread goofballs, humans, like the fish, like the school of fish, like the birds. We're bird brains, just like them. And we just go along to get along because that's what everybody at school believes. That's what everybody at work believes. That's what everybody's into. So we want to be loved and we want to be a part of our family and all of our community. So we will agree and go to the same church and believe the same thing. None of us have the guts to stand as an individual and say, I don't buy any of it publicly. And here's why. And then present your argument. And no matter what it costs you, which has cost me, my wife, my family, my my livelihood has cost me everything in my life, but I don't care. I'd rather be who I am and say what I think than to buy into something just to keep my wife happy, just to keep my family happy, just so I could keep my job. I don't buy into this system. And so I understand the system. I know how it works. And this is why today our world, the entire earth, whether it's flat or not, the entire world that we live in is now under the auspices of world communism. The idea is that we are all now living in common. It's called communism. And because we're all common, we all live in a community. And so, therefore, even in England, they have the House of Commons. And then you have the royalty. The royalty don't buy any of this crap. The royalty only concerned with one thing, money and control and violence and murder. That's all they know. It's organized crime at the highest levels. But they do realize that the rest of the people collectively have got an IQ an IQ of 40, so they refer to them as commons. And so it's the House of Commons with all the people out in the street, and then once in a while you'll see the queen drive by in her gold chariot and flip a cigarette on your children because they are royalty. They have a divine right to rule you. Why? Because you're too damn stupid. 
to rule yourself. So they own you. They've set up a system by which they actually, in fact, own your blood, your body, and it's called International Maritime Admiralty Law, in which your body has a security on the New York Stock Exchange, which is run out of London. This world that you live in is so incredibly corrupt, outrageous, downright stupid, and yet people have bought into it hook, line, and sinker. And by I papal, myself, I don't buy yeah. into it at all. Right, and by papal decree, don't forget, I mean, you talked about the uh, the body and everything and the blood and all of that, but your soul is owned by the Catholic Church as far as they're concerned. It so, sure, uh, sure are. That's exactly correct. <laughs> You know, and I'm I'm not making this up, by the way. Uh, this was decreed by the Pope a long time ago that uh, right. all of the souls on the planet belong to the Catholic Church. Am I right? That's exactly right. Because God, Almighty God, gave the world of mankind, the earth, to Jesus. So, therefore, Jesus is the owner of all the earth and all things on it. Okay, and since Jesus is not here, somebody has to run the earth for Jesus because he's in, up in heaven with the Father. Uh, he's in heaven uh, as God's son, S-U-N. He's up in heaven. And so, but he owns the earth. God gave him the earth. And he died so he he would own the whole earth. Well, now he owns the earth, but he's not here. Well, then somebody's got to run the earth for him till he gets back. And so the word is, uh, the Pope is the vicar of God, the vicar of Christ. The word vicar means someone who stands in for somebody else until they can get here. So the Pope is standing in for Jesus. He doesn't own the earth. Jesus owns it. But since he was appointed by Jesus to uh, take care of his business until Jesus gets back, you might as well figure that the Pope owns the earth. You don't think so? You try and do anything without a permit from Rome, and you will find out the mafia will deal with you. The entire world that we live under is under canon law, which gives us our basis for international maritime business law, which is corporate law. This is why in Europe, when a baby is born, they take a footprint of him, so now they own your soul. You need to wake up and find out how this world is actually put together and who did it and what the Vatican really is, not what you thought it was. And the incredible stories that have come out of religion and theology which have destroyed our freedom, our liberty, our country, our morality. We are an ignorant, ill-informed lot of on the earth, we are considered to be nothing more than cattle. Go back to a dictionary and look up the word chattel. C-H-A-T-T. -T, chattel. And you will find chattel is a, is a human word for cattle. So we humans are not cattle. We humans are chattel. And so to international banking and to all the uh, royal elites of the world... We people are nothing more than animals to be bought and sold on the New York Stock Exchange. That's why if your your daughter is going to marry some young man or your son is going to marry some young girl, that she comes from a very wealthy family, we say, well, you know, uh, she's of good stock. And, and my daughter's getting married, but she's, he's, but she's marrying a very wealthy young man. And he's of good stock. Stock? What is she doing? Marrying a cow? No, you're good stock if you are wealthy, because that's all you are to start with, is common stock, or you're of good stock. And therefore, as according to the international monetary systems of the world, you are a male or female. Go look it up in a dictionary. It's called... Male and female, but if you look it up in the in, in the law dictionaries, you will find that the word male and female are words only used in relation to animals. But if you are considered as royalty or are considered to be as royalty, and what royalty are as men and women, 
therefore, if you're royal, you are masculine and feminine. And that's the way it reads in what is called the, uh, the, the governmental systems of the world. If you are royalty or if you're wealthy, you are a man or a woman, and therefore you are designated on paper on, the, uh, on your identification as masculine or feminine. But if you're an animal, you are male and female. Look it up in a dictionary. And so that's why on all of your identification, you're either male or female. You're not a man or a woman. You're an animal, and we will treat you like an animal. We just, we put, we stamp you, we, uh, we burn into your skin uh, your, your number. We, put, we give you a number. It's called a social security number or some sort of a identification number, and you're just a number. You're not a man or woman. Therefore, you have no rights. You have no right to do anything. So don't tell me, in America, I have a right. you got no rights. You're on the International Maritime Admiralty Law, and as of, 18, as out of 1870s, the United States of America no longer exists in law. Mm. What you don't know is the United States of America no longer exists. It went defunct, but nobody told you because you weren't reading. It went defunct in 1870. The United States of America has not existed on the earth in law or in government since 1870. Because in 1870 to 1871 and 1872, there was a whole new governmental structure set up in the United States of America. Why? Because after the Civil War, the United States were not united. We weren't united anymore. We just had a civil war in which blood flowed all over this country. So we're not united. So now we're just a company. And so today we are referred to as the United States. But go back and look at it and start studying it. You'll find out today we are the United States Corporation. We're a privately owned company, a corporation. That's why when you die, you're a corpse because you're a corporation. You need to wake up and find out the world you live in is nowhere near what you thought it was. You don't have any idea about law and regulations. and You need to get a fees. You need to pay fines. You need to get a permit. You can't even get married without a license. You can't drive without a license or get married with a license. Or become a minister of the clergy without a license from mm. the state. What a sad, sad tale that's happened to the human family. You know, a couple of things before we uh, wind up closing out this hour, which is going to come up very fast, believe it or not, Jordan, uh, to verify, to back some of the things that you've said. Um, first of all, for my own personal life, I actually uh, was it was ordained a minister at one point. Uh, and I have performed a couple of marriages. Now, here's an interesting thing. <laughs> when filling out the governmental paperwork, which is different than the ceremonial aspect of it, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. the, you, you have to fill it out, uh, and register the, uh, the license in the town where the woman resides. <laughs> Which is interesting because it virtually means that only the place where she lives is allowed to issue said license, right? Like it has to be issued through there. <laughs> it, it, it's almost like the, the same type of paperwork when you're breeding livestock. Uh, guess who issues and verifies that they, you know, only <laughs> had this sort of animal here? <laughs> it would be the farm that the animal is on. Uh, that's one thing. Okay, just, just throwing that out there. And yes, indeed, you do need a license to do that. Um, <clears throat> there, there, are, there are ways to acquire it. Uh, that are interesting, but, uh, but it can be done. I actually still have one. Okay. <clears throat> so th that's, that's an absolute truth. The other thing is, when you mentioned earlier about, uh, the Jesuits stating that, uh, you know, listen, you give me a child, uh, up to the age of seven and all that, um, this comes from a story. See, they take these stories and then create behaviors Based on the stories, the story is about the prophet Samuel, right, whose mother prayed to God for a male son or a male child, excuse me, and uh, 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 therefore 
got one and stated that she would give him to God, which was she basically took the child and turned him over to the priests when he was a baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is what that behavior, what that sort of uh, philosophy is based on, is that particular story. That's an Old Testament story, by the way. Um, so, you know, if you don't believe me, go ahead and look it up. I know Jordan knows what I'm talking about, but I'm saying for the listener, uh, the, these are two realities which you have just brought forth in the first hour that some people are paying attention to. I'm actually getting some live feedback about this as we speak, and uh, we haven't gotten too many clear questions. One question is pretty intense, but I'm going to save it for the next hour because uh, it is about the value of life, and it is something that you're leading into discussing here. Um, so I, I don't want to, uh, uh, keep you held up much longer. We're going to take a break shortly, but, um, I just wanted to verify personally a couple of the things you're saying as we're going here, <laughs> you know, th th this is not a matter of, and, and here's the thing, like Jordan said at the very beginning, I I'm, I'm a, uh, and you know, a regular person, I'm a regular man who is trying to, uh, you know, a, an ordinary man, excuse me, uh, uh, trying to learn extraordinary things. Uh, trying to uh, uh, gain extraordinary knowledge, and you've certainly done that. Um, now, you, you say you're not an expert on anything, and that's fine because, you know what, neither am I, and neither is anybody who's intellectually honest. Uh, it seems like, you know, th there are areas of study that, yes, you can master one particular area of study, but in order to understand things that are this large, Jordan, it, it takes, I mean... <laughs> Several lifetimes. I mean, there are people who have gotten extraordinary chances to collect astounding amounts of information. We've discussed Manly P. Hall on the show, who was a friend of mm -hmm. yours, and he certainly collected a lot of knowledge. And, and it is amazing what he collected. But even in all fairness, and with the great, tremendous amount of uh, uh, almost a library of Alexandria uh, in its own right in modern history that he created... One could not say that even Manly P. Hall, with his resources, his insight, and his brilliance, was able to collect in the course of his lifetime everything, right? So, no, of course not. Yeah, so there's not. always exploration, and there's always <coughs> the process of learning. And I, I love the fact that you have the, uh, the humility uh, to, to recognize at all times that, you know what, I'm, I'm not necessarily the expert on everything, but I, I certainly seek knowledge and continue to seek knowledge. And, you know, I know you said you're an old man and this and that, but, uh, but even today, uh, you, you have forgotten more things than, than many people will ever learn in their lifetime. I want you to know that. And, uh, it, it is, uh, extraordinary to uh to sit and listen to you discuss these things and uh, i want to thank you for that before we even go into the next hour <laughs> okay but um you guys out there can also continue to take a look at these things by going to jordan maxwell and uh, i urge you to go take a look at the research society now you you want to buy jordan's videos you know what that is up to you it is certainly a good thing to do and you know it will be more valuable than anything you're going to spend on it for sure but I'll tell you that uh, joining the Research Society or even just contributing to Jordan's uh, general welfare, if you will, and I don't mean to say that as a dirty word, uh, by dropping something into the uh, the donation bucket, if you will, uh, corresponding with Jordan, uh, any of these things is, uh, is really a rare opportunity for you out there. So uh, I urge you to do all of that, in fact, if you can, and if not, do some of it. Um, I have certainly learned a tremendous amount in the past few years from, from Jordan's work and uh, also from being able to talk to him and things like that. But I, I'm telling you now that, uh, that this is something you need to do. Okay, Jordan, I, I'm going to give you the last couple of minutes before we go to break here to sort of finish up where you were because the value of life and the principles by which People tell us that, you know, the Judeo-Christian way of looking at this and the Judeo-Christian way, and, and these are not kings and queens that make these arguments all the time and tell me what this is about and how this should be and how it really is because really America is a Christian nation, you know, and all that. When meanwhile, as you just aptly stated, America is not even a nation at this point. However, we are still connected to the land in some way. As for who owns the land and therefore who owns you, well, a lot of decrees out there. But then again, 
you know, there's still much to be learned. So, uh, you know, let's take a couple more minutes and, and continue to go with where you're going until we take a break. But, uh, but I wanted to break in and sort of drop these couple things in. So, well, I appreciate it and I thank you for it. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the word worship <clears throat> is combined, is combined with two words. You're combining two words together. One is ship. And ship has to do with water and the high seas. And, uh, and so ship, we have a ship on the end of so many words like, uh, uh, companionship or dealership or scholarship, uh, all kinds of ship. You know, and it has to do with water. Mm. But then you take the word worth, W-O-R-T-H, worth, meaning the value of something. What is it worth? To you, well, certain things might be worth, you know, a tremendous amount to me. A picture of my mother, my dead mother, or something might be very valuable to me, but to you, it's just an old picture. You know, so it depends on your individual uh, placing of a value on something. How is what is it worth to you? And so, when you take the word worth and put it with ship like dealership and friendship and scholarship and all the other ship, <laughs> you put it together because worth ship, <clears throat> which you drop uh, drop it and just say worship. No, it's worth ship, meaning whatever it is you put a high value on, we say it's what you worth ship. And so if you put a high value on money and nothing else, well, then you worship money. If you put a high value on, on property or your your jet plane, well, that's what you worship. And so you need to understand what the word worship means. It means whatever it is you put a value on. <coughs> and most people don't realize <clears throat> that whatever it is you put a value on, that's where your heart is. And if you put a value on something and then one day uh, when you get to be older, you find out what you believe and what uh, what has been the object of your worthship, now it becomes obvious that it was not true. Now you have to look at your life. You've spent all of your life believing something. And then when you get to a certain age, it finally occurs to you and it finally hits you that what you believed is not true. And you've spent your whole life teaching other people, preaching it to other people, and now you find out you didn't know what you were talking about. That's why I say that your mind is like a parachute. It don't work if it's not open. So that's what I'm trying to do is help my fellow man to realize how much we don't know. Well, and I'll tell you what, worship in and of itself is a key. And why is that? I've been scolded, to be honest with you, for claiming that somebody worships something. <laughs> um, but what they're doing is exactly what you described here, which is placing in, in a high worth upon. And, That's right. you know, if you're worshiping something that at the end of the day doesn't really hold its value, there are people who I, I, I can confidently state worship money they just do i mean that's what their life is about right and there are people who worship uh experience i'm not so sure what to say about that because you know trying to uh, gather experiences and things like that in in some ways you know people do it in a healthy way and people do it in an unhealthy way and 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 quite honestly that those that worship just being able to collect the experience uh to me I don't know. I don't know if that's if that's a good thing or a bad thing, Jordan. I I, I leave that to the individual's ideas, right? But when yep. you see people worshiping, uh, you know, worldly goods as if they are the mark by which all things should be judged, you know, somebody's rich, so <laughs> therefore they're a smart person and they're a good person. You yep. you, you hear that kind of thing said, and you say to yourself. <laughs> It's almost as if they're worshiping the money because that money allows so much value to be put on this individual that they become something other than a man or a woman. That's they right. become uh, uh, above the others because they've collected something. And what, what does that really mean? And then there are others who say, you know, what is it you worship? They ask the question. 
What do you worship? And they ask that question to me a lot because I, I really don't give a clear definition of what my spiritual beliefs are on this show in a lot of cases. I, I, I think I do, but apparently I don't. Um, but, but when, when I say, you know, life in and of itself is a, is, is a mysterious creation. And to me, to worship it, to value it is really the thing that should be driving us that we should value life in and of itself and not make these decisions that there are lives that are not worth something and there are lives that are worth something i mean we're we're now separating people into piles right that's you know right. some people are pennies i guess and other people are silver dollars that's uh, right. you know according to some people to, again to go back to the money because it's one of those things everybody seems to recognize and never bothers to question really throughout most of their lives is that money exists and therefore does this. It, they, they question that less than they do God, certainly, any time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Of course. Um, but it's interesting that, uh, that we've come to this part of it. Now we're going to take a break and I certainly want to get into some more of this in the next hour. And I know I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Jordan, I appreciate you doing this with us. And again, uh, everybody go to jordanmaxwellshow.com. Yes, that's right. You got to put that all together in the bar. Jordan Maxwell Show. Now here at com. Do appreciate you for tuning in and putting up with all the things <laughs> that you have to in order to get to this show, apparently. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's amazing to, uh, open up the broadcast week with Jordan Maxwell, who's with me tonight. We're continuing the discussion, the series on religion. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to talk about the seven foundations now of, uh, that, that allegedly codified thing that they call the judeo-christian belief system in this hour but uh before we get straight into the meat of that i want to remind you again that if you go to jordanmaxwellshow.com uh that is your starting point to get into everything from the research society which has a special button there and has a one-time fee if you want to join it and get very deep into this topic as well as many others including government money uh you know the secret societies uh the various control elements of the system at large if you will uh you can discover all of that in not only jordan maxwell's work which is public most of it being given away over the many years but you go into the research society and you can get even more in depth and there's more information being added all the time but also if you go to jordan maxwell show.com there's now streaming videos there which are direct and now jordan will be able to put up new videos and things like that you'll be able to just simply purchase them for a small fee all of that along with donations or anything else is all helpful to the cause of a getting out the information which jordan has collected but also to helping him directly which i absolutely uh in, endorse his deserving nature when it comes to this he's absolutely educated a lot of people out there including myself over the years and uh most of the time without asking for anything in return <laughs> Uh, you know, just to note for everybody, there's, there's not like there's anything being given to me for, you know, doing these shows with him or anything like that. I'm not giving him anything. We are simply doing this because we wish to educate you. And Jordan, for a lot longer than I have, has been out there doing precisely that. So anyway, let's leave it at that. I, I want to get into these foundations, Jordan. And uh, again, I, I want to thank you for, for doing this with us and uh, continuing with the series, which, by the way, we still have no idea how many episodes it will be. Um, <laughs> at, at some point, Jordan will say, I've covered as much as I'm going to be able to cover with your show, and that'll be that. But uh, until such time as Jordan says we're done, we're not done. And this is episode nine. So. Uh, with that, Jordan, you know, I, I'd like to learn about the seven foundations because, you know, they tell me about the Ten Commandments and they tell me about the hundreds of laws there are in the Old Testament. And they tell me about this one very simple and easy to understand uh, concept, right, that is the ethics of the Judeo-Christian, the Western world, uh, the Christian nation that is the United States, all these things they tell me about. And um, I'm confused, to be honest with you. So let's get to the actual foundation of what it is they're really talking about. Yeah, well, 
this I will tell you, then, and I have to say that I don't care if you understand. I don't care if you believe it or don't believe it. I don't have any care whatsoever as to what you may think about what I'm saying. I'm just taking the opportunity that you give me to talk with you and tell you what my thoughts are. <clears throat> I'm not the world's foremost authority, as I've said, but I'll tell you what I think. And this is my just my belief, that I, one of my core basic beliefs, and that is that Judaism did not proceed uh, Christianity. I believe that the, the basis for Christianity and Judaism was proceeded by uh, something else. <clears throat> and I think probably a lot of the foundation for what we call Judeo-Christianity is actually Hinduism, going back to ancient India. There's no doubt in my mind about that because I've been looking at it for 60 years <clears throat> 59 years of study has given me at least enough knowledge to know where things have come from. Uh, I believe that uh, Judaism, as we know it today, was given to the world during the A.D., from about maybe, I would say, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th century A.D., because there's no doubt in my mind, I mean, I don't care what you know or feel or think, <clears throat> but there's no doubt in my mind that that Judaism as we are given it today did not exist in the B.C. world before our common era. There was no Israel. There was no uh, Old Testament stories all of these stories have been given to us in what we call the Bible, the Old Testament, were given to us in the A.D., <clears throat> Adodoma, the A.D., uh, or starting, I think, probably around the uh, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th century, going into the 9th and 10th century A.D., because there was no ancient Israel, period. And there was no King Solomon or King David <clears throat> or uh, or any of the other famous names coming out of the Old Testament story. It's just a story. The Bible is called the greatest story ever told. I used to get uh, jumped on by my mother would jump at me and, and, and give me all kinds of problems but for telling stories. Yeah, well, this is a story. And it's referred to as the people of the book. Jews, Christians, and Islamic are people of the book, meaning their, their religion is based on a book. And so I quoted from the Quran that says, God says to the, his followers, Allah said to his followers, we, not me, not I, we, we have come down from above and gave you your scriptures. Well, that implies that somebody higher up than you has come down to you. They, they lowered themselves down to your level and gave you your scriptures. Why? Because they know you don't have brains enough to come up with the scriptures, so they will put it all together for you. And it will be a nice, clean package, and it all makes sense, and millions of people will adhere to it, and zero, nobody knows where it came from, nobody knows where the story was put together, and you don't need to know, because it's a big club, and you ain't in it, and so if we brought it down to you, and you just suck it up, and believe it, and go out, and kill each other, and and believe whatever it is we tell you to believe, because that's the way animals are. And so that's the way the fish are. They go in schools, and that's what humans do. They go to school, and the Jews go to shul. And so the bottom line is that we're all learning from our masters who are teaching us what to believe. And happily, myself, I've learned enough to know how much I don't know. <clears throat> but I've also learned in the past 59 years of just reading and studying, trying to find truth, 
And I've quoted that um, that one quote I like that says, "Always, always trust the person searching for truth. Don't ever trust the one who's found it." And so <clears throat> the bottom line being is that, you know, if you are searching for something, I want to hear it. I want to hear what you've come up with, what, what, what facts and what figures and what have you come up with and documents and pictures or whatever uh, and in relation to what you've been researching. I'm fascinated to hear it. I want to know. I want to learn from people who know more than, than I do. But if you're going to tell me that you've got the final and ultimate truth of God, uh, I know well enough to know you don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> because uh, you know God is too big for one religion. And so some of the best minds that we've ever had on the earth will tell you they don't know what the real truth is. Here's the best we can come up with. And that's what I'm doing. I'm telling you that the best I can come up with is after 59 years of reading about theology and religion and the history of the march of world powers and the march of history throughout the world, uh, I, I've got a, a pretty good idea about how much I don't know. <clears throat> but having said that, uh, I believe that Judaism is not a BC religion. I don't believe anything uh, existed in the... Uh, before our common era that we would call the Jewish presence on earth or the Hebrew presence on earth. And so I think it was all pretty much uh, written down and codified and put into a religious uh, setting during the Middle Ages uh, after the fall of the Roman Empire in the 5th century and the picking up of the pieces of the Roman Empire by the Vatican and beginning to recreate the Roman Empire from its fall in the 5th century uh, to a recreating of the entire superstructure of Western civilization and the, and the shadow of the fallen Roman Empire. And that's what we have today, the new Euro uh, that we're watching from here in America, we're watching what's going on in Europe. This is the Vatican behind the world scene financing, organizing, directing uh, the powers that be, the secret societies and the fraternal orders in the Catholic Church and in the Vatican that are dominating the European world market, dominating Europe. And remember, Rome as, a, as, a, as an empire dominated Europe <clears throat> for some 2,500 years uh, you know, before with the, the Caesars of Rome. And then with the fall of the Roman Empire, the Vatican picked it up 1,600 years ago, and they've been dominating. Rome still dominates Europe today. And today we have the Pope, the Holy Father, the Pontific Maximus. And Pontific means a bridge builder. And mm. Pontific Maximus means the maximum bridge builder. Well, that's what the Pope is. And that's what Caesar was referred to as the Pontiff and the Roman Empire, because he was a bridge builder, meaning he collected nations under him. He would build a, a, a bridge, so to speak, politically, to another country. Why and how? How did he build that bridge? He, he sent his troops in. He sent his legions in and took over the country and overthrew the government and took over and brought that country under the Roman Empire, under Caesar. So he built a bridge. And so the bridge builder became known as the Pontifex Maximus, which is exactly what the Pope is doing today. He's joining all of Europe together into one Euro united European state under the Vatican. And that one Euro state is operating also behind the scenes in Russia, in America, <clears throat> in China, and ultimately to bring about a one world government which was the dream of the ancient Romans to, all, uh, to actually control and own the whole earth and everything living on it. And there's nothing we as humans are going to do to stop this. There's nothing you can do. Why? Because you don't have any power to do anything. And the reason you don't have any power is because knowledge is power. 
And if you don't understand how this world works, then you have no knowledge about any of it. Therefore, you need to just sit quiet and your masters who own you and run this world will tell you what you need to know. And if you get in their way, they'll kill you or throw you into prison. So this idea of America being the land of the free and the home of the brave, uh, like Dick Gregory said, you're not free or brave. If you were free and brave, you know, you would have changed what's going on in this country a long time ago. So you're not free or brave. <clears throat> Therefore, I am saying that the political and the sociological life that we live in the Western world is based on our religious belief systems that go back to supposedly go back to BC and point of fact Judaism is not a BC religion it's a AD religion not a BC so when you want to talk about the ancient Jerusalem and the ancient Jewish people and all that ancient stuff it's a pile of malarkey that never existed and today now in Israel there is a whole movement now today in Israel and, and the universities of Israel with the writers and, and professors and scientists and philosophers writing about the, the story of Israel was, a, was nothing more than a story. There was no ancient Israel. There was no ancient prophets. The entire thing is just a story. And we look at the Quran and see what the uh, what the followers of Muhammad are actually doing with their with their you know child sacrifices and their and the wars and the bloodshed. And then we look at Christians and what they're doing, and now all the sexual stuff coming out in the church and religions and the pedophilia, etc. And then you look into the Jewish religion. We see that was that was rampant with pedophilia and all kinds of dark stuff going on. You begin to see that the entire human superstructure in this world has been misled a long time ago, and we're all believing things which aren't true. <clears throat> now, I have said, and I believe that there are seven different fundamental belief systems within the Jewish religion, seven different religions completely different from each other, but all amalgamated and, and cleverly put together. <clears throat> and so this is why if you go to any library or go on the web and start doing your own research and don't just believe the, <clears throat> the people who are supposedly your religious leaders in your church who they got what they got from a book and they had to go through and get Caesar, the government, to give them a degree so they had to go to a college or university to become a Christian, <clears throat> why? Because they, you know, that's how you do it. If you're going to become a Christian minister, you've got to go to college and get a degree, which means that you are now accredited by Caesar, by Tiberius Caesar, the emperor of the empire in Washington, D.C., and he will give you a permit to preach about Jesus and preach about the Christ and preach in your religion. And if you don't have that permit, you better keep your mouth shut because you don't have Caesar's imprimatur on your ministry. So myself, I don't care a damn about Caesar. I don't care anything about the religions of the Romans, the Etruscan peoples, and going all the way back into the Phoenician and Canaanite systems in the ancient Middle East. You need to wake up and find out how this world was really put together. But talking about the seven foundations, we won't be able to do a whole lot with it, of course, because there are seven totally different subjects here. But I feel that all seven are represented in Judaism. So let's start with that. First of all, <clears throat> Judaism has within it, uh, all you need to know is just read uh, the, the writings and the reference works, the Jewish encyclopedia, Jewish reference works on the, on the religion. And you see that there are seven basic philosophies that make up what we call Judaism. One is the ancient stellar cult. The stellar cult goes back, oh, God knows how many thousands of years ago uh, in that area of the world that we today call the Middle East and Egypt. Stellar cult meant the people who 
were trying to discover the, the, uh, about God in the stars. And so the stars were the foundation for understanding the universe. You look out into the universe to see God, and what do you see is stars. And so there were intelligent people who started to look at the stars and how they were arranged, and they became known as astrology or astrological worship. And so the co correct and proper word was stellar worship or stellar cults. And then uh, that was one facet of Judaism. Now, there was another facet that entered into the world, which was accepted eventually during the A.D., that was accepted and, and amalgamated into the Jewish religion. Uh, we start with the stellar cult, but then there was another cult called the moon cult, or the solar cult. And uh, and so uh, the solar cult was a sun, but the moon cult was the worship of the moon, uh, and lunar cult is what I'm trying to say. And so when you see the lunar cult impl impl uh, implications in Judaism, becomes overwhelming that uh, whatever way it was put together, Judaism is is filled with moon worship. <clears throat> and uh, then another uh, worship, uh, that was during the time of what we call Moses. Moses was a lunar uh, worshiper. Moses led the lunar cult. So Moses was, uh, the whole idea of Moses and the religion of Moses is based on the moon worship. Uh, then we have another worship of the ancient world that was also implied in, Ju in Ju Judaism, and in Christianity was the volcano cult, the worship of the Roman and ancient god Vulcan. Vulcan was a volcano god. Volcanoes became very important in the religion of the Middle East at one time, and so that, that has to be added into Judaism. And so you will find in Judaism stellar, or the worship of the stars, astrology, you will find the moon, uh, the lunar cult uh, connected with Moses. Then you will find that there's a volcano cult or the worship of the god Vulcan. And this is why Mr. Spock on Star Trek gives us a Vulcan hand sign. And the Vulcan hand sign is the one hand with the fingers divided the way uh, you know, the, uh, Mr. Spock does it. And that dividing of the fingers on the hand like Mr. Spock was based on the volcano cult that's why he's called a Vulcan well that was part of the Jewish religion and the dividing of the hand, dividing of the fingers on the hand was a symbol of Aries, the ram it was a goat's hoof and then there's also today very prominent within Judaism Besides the volcano cult, we now also have something called the Saturnian cult, or the worship of the planet Saturn in Judaism. And Saturn seems to be a very big subject today in Judaism. The Jews still worship <clears throat> uh, their, their holy days or after sundown. Well, that has to do with the moon worship. But they also have their Sabbath day. The Sabbath is to, you know, even Christians are told to <clears throat> be be holy and to keep the Sabbath. Well, the word Sabbath comes from the name, the Phoenician Canaanite name for the planet Saturn. Saturn was not called Saturn. That is our term today for that planet. But in the ancient world, there was a worship of that planet Saturn, but he, it was called Shabbat. S-H-A-B-B-A-T-H was the word for Saturn in the ancient Phoenician Canaanite system, Shabbat. And therefore, if you're going to worship Shabbat, the planet Saturn, you do it on something called Sabbath. So therefore, if you're to holy and keep holy the Sabbath day, is saying keep holy the worship of the planet Saturn. The planet Saturn is Shabbat, or the worship is on the Sabbath. And this is why today the Jews still <clears throat> uh, 
worship uh, their god Saturn on Saturn's day, and and the, and the day starts after six o'clock. And as I said, that comes from the moon cult because the moon comes out at six o'clock. And so today we have the Jews worshiping on the Sabbath, which is Saturn day. Saturn's day is a Sabbath. And, and Saturn was referred to, the old god Saturn was referred to as the inhibitor, the one who inhibits you. So anything which will hold you back and keep you from doing something uh, is called Saturnian. It's Saturn in your life. Well, the police department, mafia, governmental, uh, uh, fire department, police department, government, military, banking, these are all Saturnian uh, devices because all of them have the power to hold you back and teach you a lesson. And so they can throw you into jail. That's Saturnian. And so the ancient, uh, the, uh, the, uh, ancient people said, well, if Saturn is the inhibitor, the one who holds you back, uh, well, when we're worshiping him, we're not going to do nothing. So therefore, he doesn't have to hold us back we're not going to do nothing to start with, period. Because no matter what you do, Saturn's going to hold you back, so why bother? Just stay home and relax and don't even do nothing. So that's what today the Jews do on Sabbath. Zero, much of nothing. Why? Because Saturn is the inhibitor and he's going to stop you anyway, so don't even bother. Now we go to the next uh, form of worship I, I see in uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam is sex worship. All three religions are drowning in sex worship. It's an incredible uh, hidden story about the foundational beginnings of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are based on sex, period. And that's everywhere. So it's not just uh, pedophilia in the church. No, 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 no. It goes all the way back to the uh, the ancient Phoenicians, Canaanites, Sumerians, all the ancient peoples of the world were heavily involved in sex worship. Then also in Judaism, we have a sixth different uh, influence, and it's called Yahwehism. And Yahwehism was a worship of a bull. Yahweh, the God Yahweh, the, the holiest of all holy gods, was referred to and pictured in the ancient Phoenician Canaanite in the ancient world as a bull. And this is why today when important things are said by the Pope is called a papal bull, which as far as I'm concerned, it's all full of bull. But Yahweh was a, was a god of bulls. He was a bull worshiper. <clears throat> now, the, the, the last one, I think, is probably the most pervasive uh, influence in Judaism, and also the most important one, is the sun worship, the worship of the sun. Now, this one becomes extremely uh, controversial, and I'm going to do a video on this where I will shove it into your face so that there's no one going to be able to say it's, uh, that I am making this story up. I'm going to fill this with documents from the Jewish encyclopedia, from all Jewish reference works, from encyclopedias and dictionaries of theology. I'm going to show you how the entire world of mankind on the, on the cutting edge of theology, religion, business, and banking, all of this world that we have built up for ourselves and told ourselves that this is the truth this world that we have built up is based on the worship of the sun Pharaoh Akhenaten and so today if you go into any synagogue on the earth today it's the symbols will just astound you how overwhelmingly obvious the worship of uh, the sun god of Egypt Pharaoh Akhenaten is now the center of worship on all altars of Judaism on the earth, period. No matter what country you go to, no matter where you go to a synagogue, you will always see today something called the Tetragrammaton. The Tetragrammaton are four letters 
always pictured inside of a sunburst. It's always inside of a circle with the uh, sun rays around the circle, obviously representing the sun. And so in every synagogue on the earth, you walk in, you will see on the altar four Hebrew letters for the name of God, their main name for God. So they say in Judaism that you cannot use the name of God uh, because it's too holy. But they have a word uh, which represents God that it's okay to use. Uh, you don't want to use it a whole lot, but it is all right to use. But you cannot know and you cannot use the very name of God. You can't do that. But you can use this term that, that's okay uh, to, to represent the, the Father God, the great God of, of creation in the Jewish religion. <clears throat> and it's called four Hebrew letters inside a circle with the sun rays. All synagogues show it. It's called the Tetragrammaton. Mm. Tetragrammaton. Tetra is four. Gramma is letters, like A, B, C, D. Uh, letter is grammar. So it's tetra, grammar, aton, A-T-O-N. Tetra, grammar, aton, or tetragrammaton. Say it fast and you'll, you'll miss the whole story. No, tetragrammaton is a symbol for God in Judaism today as tetra for grammar, letters, aton. The aton was the sun god. Pharaoh Ak Aton or Akhnaton? No, it's Akhton, T O N. So, therefore, everywhere in every synagogue you will always see the sun with the tetragramma Aton. So, the bottom line on, on Christianity and Judaism today is the sun, the sun worship with a little bit of the bull worship of Yahweh. Uh, with a little bit of the sex worship from all over the Middle East, uh, a little bit of the Saturn worship, worshiping the Saturn, uh, worshiping the planet Saturn on Shabbat or Sabbath, worshiping a little bit of the volcano god, Vulcan. And why the volcano god? Because a volcano was a sexual symbol of a female. She's in, and the whole idea of a volcano is a hole in the earth with fire. And so your mother, your mother earth and mother nature, there's a hole in mother nature and a hole in mother earth that's filled with fire. Mm. And so this is the sexual, this is why volcanoes are given female names because a volcano represented a female during sex. It's an explosion of, of, of fire. This is why the pyramid is important in, in the worship today, too, is because a pyramid, the word pyramid, is actually pyra, P-Y-R-A, mid, pyramid. Pyra is fire. Mid is the middle. In the ancient world, they realized pyramid meant fire in the middle. And so the fire of sex is in the middle of the human body, the volcano, the female, and uh, or the male, which has to do with sexual symbols of the of the phallic symbol. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the moon worship. And we don't want to forget the stellar, uh, the worship of the stars. So I'm just saying, if you really take time, about 40 or 50 years, and read and study all about the theology and the religions of the world, you will find that there's basically seven stellar cult, Moon worship, volcano worship, Saturn worship, sex worship, Yahweh or the worship of the bull, and today, sun worship, the tetragramma aton. And mm. if you really want to get controversial and stir up some serious trouble, which I don't, but I do, <laughs> if you really want to stir up some trouble, you can look at that worship of the aton the sun symbol in Judaism. And then you begin to see it's now been uh, been transferred into Christianity. And the Christians are now worshiping God's son, S-U-N. <clears throat> and what, when did they do that? They do that on Sunday. 
It's not spelled S O N day. It's S U N day. It's a day for the worship of the sun. Jesus is referred to as God's son, the light of the world. Well, of course, the sun is the light of the world. Well, he is our risen savior. Of course, the sun is your risen savior. If it doesn't rise, you're dead in three weeks. So obviously the Son is your risen Savior. See, and the so you the evidence for this, by the way, you know, it crisscrosses every single thing you just talked about. Yeah. Because uh, when you begin with the stellar worship, one thing that you didn't mention here today, but you have mentioned many times, is that, uh, you know, look, that, that that's a cult that surrounds itself with the imagery of Horus and that story. And that story parallels perfectly the Son, uh, which of course, is also very, very similar to the Jesus story. Yep. Um, so there, there's your symmetry right there. <laughs> okay, yep. Be, between those pieces. But moving forward, I mean, you, you, we've talked about the bull, how Abraham and a Brahmin and all of that come into play. I mean, That's literally, right. as I'm listening to you do this, it, it crisscrosses back and forth between all of it. And the That's fact right. that sex is laid out throughout the entire thing, now, of course it is, and, and I've tried to tackle this with you too before, and, and we, we discussed it a little bit. It's interesting to me because the concept of sex and the concept of life being created through the interaction and this uh, mystical experience that is part of our, well, our uh, design, if you will, it, it, it kind of makes sense that it's something that is revered. But... At the same time, look, when we take a look at modern Christianity, right, what do they talk about? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Okay, yep. we've talked about who the Father is. <laughs> we've done yep. that already. We've talked about the Son and S-O-N and S-U-N and all of that. But, you know, at some point we're going to have to get through this whole Holy Spirit thing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I know it's probably going to take an entire two hours to just begin <laughs> to scratch at it. But, yeah. but at some point, I, I, I want to get to that with you. But here's the thing. If you just take a look at minor aspects of this, whether it is the use of fire for cleansing or the, the, the volcanic uh, 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 behaviors of a volcano and exactly how volcano cults, and there are many of them, by the way, but the mm -hmm. more recognized ones that were in the ancient world, had a, a codified list of things that'll sound really familiar to you if you adapt them to modern stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you have all of this, uh, the, the ideas of, you know, like the, the fire and brimstone. Where do you think it comes from? Okay. Um, all of these things crisscross back and forth, and you can find them throughout all of the, what they call the three Abrahamic religions in a lot of cases. But all yep. of this stuff is woven like like stitched throughout all of it it's yep. exactly correct these these seven the the, the 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 seven foundational pieces of the puzzle if you will and uh i i know you've already given them but i want <laughs> you to repeat them again because yep. i want people to actually take each one of these things and go ahead and just you know do 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 a look do a search pick up a book whatever it is you have access to to take a look at the aspects of each one of these things objectively yep. okay don't, don't don't even begin with uh, okay the bible and the, the, no, put those aside for a moment just yeah. take a look at the things that you just talked about yeah let, uh, let me enumerate them again so please. people listening to them can go back and listen to it again please first of all look at the uh, the presence on the earth in thousands of years ago of something called the stellar cult s-t-e-l-l -L, stellar cult the stellar cult and then after that comes the lunar or the moon cult, the lunar cult of Moses. Then there is the volcano cult of the volcano worshipers. Then there was the planet Saturn. Saturn was the, the god of the Jews. Saturn is today one of the primary uh, features of the Jewish religion is the worship of the planet Saturn. Saturn was referred to as the Lord of the Rings. Of course, Saturn was Lord of the Rings. 
This is why today the Jews in Hollywood are still making movies about Lord of the Rings, because it's their God. Then there was also, go back and do some research on sex worshipping uh, in the ancient world and sex worship symbols. Go on the web and type in Christian Jewish uh, sex worshipping symbols. And then there's the Yahweh or the bull cult, the cult of the bull. That's why when the Pope speaks, it's in a papal bull. Yahweh was, was always pictured in the ancient world as a bull. <clears throat> and today we also have the Tetragramma Aton, the Aton worship, which I consider to be the most controversial, is the sun worship in Judaism and Christianity, period. It, as a matter of fact, a lot of, of the Muhammad people, the followers of Muhammad, do not realize that Allah is a moon god. It goes back to the old ancient uh, lunar cult in the Middle East that the ancient Arabs worshipped the moon as a lunar cult because in Egypt uh, or on the on the uh, the end uh, on that particular side of the Sinai connected to uh, the water from Egypt, if you stand there in Egypt and look east every evening. Over the Sinai, the moon comes up from the mountain. There's a mountain range in the middle of the Sinai. And every evening, about 6 o'clock, the moon rises from the mountain. And so the ancient ancient peoples of the Middle East, uh, the ancient Arabic world, they saw the moon come up from behind the mountains. So they realized that the moon lives in the mountain, obviously, because that's where you see him every time he wakes up. He comes out into the world, and from where? From the mountain. So he obviously lives in the mountain. So in the ancient Arabic world, the word for the moon was the old man of the mountain. They talk about that. Go back and look at the old man of the mountain in ancient Arabia was the moon, because he obviously lived in the mountain. Why? Because that's where you see him come up. And what time does he come up? About 6 o'clock. So this is why the ancient Arabic had their worship of the moon after 6 o'clock. Today, this is why Jews today have their holy days after sundown, after 6 o'clock, because they're worshiping the moon. The moon is the the, soul, uh, the lunar god of Moses. Moses is a name connected in Egypt with the worship of the moon. And, uh, and we talked about that before. So <clears throat> all of these different cults, Stellar, Moon Cult, Volcano, Saturn, Sex Worshipping, Yahweh the Bull, and today the Sun Cult. But the most important in today's world of banking, government, military, the real harsh realities of the world mm. that we live in today, including the international banks and the money in your pocket, is based on the Sun Cult. The Sun Cult of of uh, the Aton, and the Jewish symbol for in, 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 in Judaism for their god is the Tetragramma Aton. And the Aton was the sun cult. And boy, when you find out the connections, most people have no idea about this at all. But there is a profound, awesome connection between the Jewish people and Germany. The Germanic peoples, the Germans, and the Jewish people are connected in a way that you have never heard before, and you're not aware of at all. The implications are staggering when you begin to see the ancient so-called Jewish <clears throat> presence in the, world, in the world and the ancient occult connection between the Germanic peoples, the Aryan Germanic super race, the master race that Adolf Hitler talked about, <clears throat> which was a master race of Aryans. And then when you find out that the master race were a highly uh, polished, uh, a holy people, and they were told not to have anything to do with, their, with the, the regular people of the world. They were a master race. Well, that's what Judaism teaches, that the Jews are a master race. Mm. And they will have nothing to do with Gentiles because they were a holy 
priesthood to their God, whichever one that was at the time. <clears throat> and so when you start looking at the, the uh, Tetragrammaton or the worship of the sun god of Egypt, the Aton, and then realize that the swastika of Adolf Hitler was a sun symbol. Everybody knows that. Right. Uh, if you just read, look up the word swastika, it'll tell you it's a tetragramma aton. It's a symbol for the aton, the god of Egypt, the sun god. And so the <clears throat> then you look up and see how many swastikas are all over the world in Jewish synagogues. Synagogues around the world are replete with swastikas everywhere. There are swastikas in the, in the synagogues in Israel, the swastikas in synagogues in America, swastikas in Russian uh, synagogues, all over the world in synagogues are big uh, red, black, and white Sw uh, swastikas. Why? Because it's the Tetragramma Aton. The worship of the swastika is a Jewish symbol. Period. Mm. So you better go back and look at what we call it because today, and, and today in Israel, as in, and going back into hundreds of years ago, in Israel, today in America, we have something called a Supreme Court. And in our Supreme Court, we have a Supreme Court judge. We have what is called the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, which means he is the highest ranking judge on the Supreme Court. Right. So he is the highest ranking judge. Uh, he's a Supreme Court judge, but he's the Chief uh, Supreme Court judge. Well, in Israel and, and in Judaism, they have the same idea. Today, even in Israel, they have a Jewish Supreme Court. And obviously, in the Jewish Supreme Court, like America, they also have a Supreme Court judge who is the highest judge. He's the highest judge in the Jewish Supreme Court. Look in the dictionary and look up the word uh, Nazi, N-A-S-I. N-A-S-I, write it down, read it, and go to a dictionary and look up the word. N-A-S-I, Nazi, right. is a Supreme Court judge in Israel. In a Jewish court, the Supreme Court judge is called a Nazi, N-A-S-I. Look it up in the dictionary, and it will tell you, uh, it will tell you Supreme Court judge in Israel, but a uh, more a uh, more modern use of the word is then as N A Z I. That's what the encyclopedia and the dictionary said, not me. The dictionary says, look up the word S N A S I, and it will tell you it's naturally a better spelling is N A Z I. Why? Because it's the the swastika is connected to the worship of the Aton, Tetra Gramma Aton. You're talking about Nazism, you're talking about Judaism, you better go back and do some homework and find out what the name of the tune is really all about. You better wake up. Mm. You know, in a literal sense, when you look up the uh, the term N-A-S-I, you come up with uh, the translation being Prince, believe it or not. It, yeah. it, it's it's uh, exactly like you're stating it. It's uh, a, a, a rank, <laughs> okay. That's right. You're 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 literally royalty. Uh, is what that that's means. You're above right. others. See, that's the thing. Uh, like like you said, chief. Okay, we understand chief, right? It means yeah. that among the others that are of the same type, this is the one who is the leader. That's Very right. simple. So who who is the prince among men, if you will? Right. There's an old phrase for you. <laughs> The Prince Among yeah. Men is the Nasi, N-A-S-I. That's, That's pretty right. interesting. Um, That's right. We're running... Now you're starting to get into the yeah. really dark stuff now. Right. And un unfortunately, we're beginning to run low on time. Now, <laughs> this is... Yeah. I, I, Probably just as well. It, ju just as well. You know, that means we're going to have to continue this, obviously. Um, but... You know, before we, uh, before we wind up signing off, uh, again, uh, you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that you're doing this with us for sure. Um, 
and and I appreciate. I, I always learn something. Every one of these shows, I learn uh, more than one thing usually. But no matter what, it's always something uh, of, of interest uh, that uh, that enters my mind that wasn't there before, and usually gets me digging into other things. By the way. Um, and hopefully yeah. that'll have the same effect for all of you. Now, here's an interesting thing I have a, a question about. Um, I'm not sure if we really have enough time for this, but let's, let's throw it at you anyway and see, see where you go with it. Uh, there is this idea that, um, See, I'm trying to read from this question, and you, you know what? I'm going to actually save this. Never mind. I will actually save your question until next time. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. There, there was a guy. No, there, there, this guy sent me an interesting thought, but I, but I don't know how to get through it quickly, and I don't want to cut and off any of the answer. Um, so I'm going to put that along with the value of life question, yeah. which is uh, which is something else. See, now we, we may actually do an episode again where we just answer questions. So, yeah, yeah, that's uh, fine. obviously everybody feel free to either write to myself or Jordan, and uh, we'll, we'll make it part of the discussion. Uh, if you have a reasonable question about what's been discussed already or what you uh, think has been missed, etc., go right ahead and send it to, uh, you know, either go to jordanmaxwellshow.com and uh, you can find the email link there and email it straight to Jordan, or you can email info at ocelli Dot com, and I'm the only one who reads the info email. So info at Ocelli dot com or email Jordan one way or another. We'll we'll put them together and uh, answer your questions. So with all that having been said, and of course, uh, I, I want people to go over to Jordan Maxwell Show dot com anyway, because uh, you can get into the research society over there now. Uh, which uh, it has a one-time fee to get a lifetime membership. I urge you to do that. There's a lot more exploration that can be had there, a lot of references. I mean, tons and tons of stuff that uh, is not always out there in the public domain, but Jordan has collected, and there's more being added all the time. We have the new streaming video feature over at jordanmaxwellshow.com when you go into... Um, when you go into the research, so, well, when you go into the site in general, you can find where you can purchase some of these videos from Jordan, and um, that way it'll cost you less than having a, a DVD mailed to you in a package, basically, uh, because by the time somebody was to charge you for it or whatever else. And besides that, you're going to the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's, which is jordanmaxwellshow.com. Um, but obviously, you know, make a donation, email Jordan, uh, do all that, but... We're we're just about out of time, so you know I'm wondering if you want to kind of stamp the final word on tonight's discussion. Um, we we definitely went through these seven foundations, which I think are extremely enlightening and worthy of you out there going and doing exploration on your own. Please do, okay? And even use of the word N A S I, which kind of sounds like nasi. Oh wait a minute, that sounds like another word. Yeah, they will try and correct you if you just put it into Google. But um, go ahead and take a look at what that word actually means and what it could mean in various contexts, and all of a sudden things look a little different. Um, there's a lot of knowledge that uh, you've obviously laid on us, and this is the end of Part 9, so I kind of give you the last couple of minutes to sort of lay out there whatever it is you'd like to say. Uh, and, and, and again, Jordan Maxwell Show dot com all together. Jordan Maxwell Show. Dot com. That's where you need to go to begin to uh, look at the website, which is the only one that is Jordan's. Okay. Thank you. Go Thank ahead. you. Thank you for telling everybody that because it's very important. Because there are other websites out there with my name on it. I have nothing to do with. <clears throat> but uh, my only website is Jordan Maxwell Show, and I'd like to invite you to join my research society, which is nothing more than all of the things I'm talking about, the documents, the pictures, the the white papers, the research documents, people, places, and things you need to know about. It's all on my research society, and I paid a terrible price with my life to to provide this for you. And I would ask that you please help me because at 78 years old, I live by myself, and I have little to no income, and I do what I do because I love wisdom and knowledge and sharing it. So I ask you to please consider helping me by by donating to me because it's the only income I really have to stay alive and to keep my website and my work alive is from donations from people who care about me and care about what I've done 
and care about the fact that I've devoted my whole life to uncovering most knowledge that you will never be told. So I do what I do because I love wisdom, I love knowledge, and I love people to know, and I want to help people. But it takes money to stay alive, and I have none. So I, I appreciate anything you would do, joining my research society, watching my videos, uh, which you can do now, uh, and, and, and contributions just to keep me alive. I want to thank you for all of this, and I really want to thank you, Chuck, for allowing me some time to begin to download all the stuff I've been looking at for 60 years of my life. It's a fascinating world we live in, and you have no idea how much we really don't know. And that's what I'm trying to do is help people to learn. And, you, and I would suggest you want, should do something about it while we can, because uh, the world is changing and knowledge is being taken away from us. So help support me while you can. And thank you. Well, absolutely. And look, it, it is our privilege to do this with you. There will be yet another part. So let's see. That'll be part 10. Uh, again, this series will continue for as long as Jordan wants to continue it. That's that's what I said. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> so as long okay. as I'm here and you're here, Jordan, and uh, you wish to continue, we're going to continue to do this. And uh, it is, uh, again, uh, a privilege and an honor to do this with you. And uh, I appreciate uh, you coming on here to do it because, okay. you know, you and I have very similar ideas in our mind about why it is we we are we have devoted time effort and uh really actually given up uh, a portion of our lives one way or another to do this i i know it doesn't i i haven't given up the amount of time that you have i realize that but you know those of us that do this are not getting rich there's nope. nobody getting rich with this there is nobody i mean uh, whatever level of fame you know jordan's a well-known guy there are people all across the world know who jordan maxwell is you know what that amounts to at the end of the day? Yeah, Not much. A cup of coffee. A cup of coffee, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I live in one room. I just live in one room, uh, uh, you know, by myself with uh, with a Social Security of a few hundred dollars a month. I don't get my full Social Security because I had to take it early. So I get a few dollars a month to live in Social Security. But by, after I pay rent, my utilities, and buy something to eat, I'm broke. And then I have to worry for the rest of the month how I'm going to pay my bills and stay alive and keep my website up. That costs money, too, to run a website. So I'm asking if you care about me and care about what I've done with my whole life and care about what I'm doing, then then do something to help me. And the best way to do that is to contribute something uh, to me. I'm asking for help. Yeah. And again, I thank you, uh, Chuck, for giving me the opportunity to voice the past 60 years of my life. It just uh, is astounding to me how much people don't know, and I want to talk about all kinds of things in the future. So we'll continue to keep this going as long as I'm here. <laughs> there we go. And at 78 years old, I don't know how long that's going to be because I'm not going to be here much longer. So. Well, I appreciate any help you can give me now while I'm still here. Absolutely. And look, you know, that, that, that's the other thing. Like I said, you know, it, it, it is for the reason that we want to see people have a chance to do something about the situation that we find all of ourselves in. You know, you use the phrase the human family, and when I've had Jeffrey Matt on the show, he echoes that uh, that same phrase. He uses it also because we recognize that we are actually part of something. That's and right. we'd, we'd like to see all of us actually not drown in That's the right. sea of sickness that is uh, being poured upon the planet, if you will. And we can talk about exactly who's doing that, and we can talk about where it's exactly coming from and what the power is and all that. But the fact is, I don't want to see any of us drown. I'd really like to see humanity as a family survive, and thrive, right. and how are they going to do it? Because they're going to have the power of understanding, of knowledge. Right. And that is the only way that you can begin to form a strategy and in, in how to deal with anything, right? What 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 are the what are the rules here when it comes to dealing with something that is an attack upon you? You have yep. to know what's happening first in order to be able to forge that strategy. Yeah. So right. this is the point. Any